July 4th weekend is coming up and I do have a little trip planned. So I wanna go over kind of what my gear that I carry for this and how it's kind of evolved from carrying like almost everything down to almost nothing, not quite nothing, but I'm, I'm getting there. Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing all right. My name is Matt and this is Dwyer Creatives and today we're going over my travel gear. I do have a trip coming up for July 4th weekend. I'm going back home up to the Boston area. And of course I have to fly up there from where I am. So this is gonna be in terms of carrying kind of just what I need to do this because it is gonna be more for family and friends, just kind of what I would bring with me for this trip. Normally when I go out, I'm gonna be using either a DSLR or my mirrorless camera that I'm shooting on, which is my Canon R6. And typically I'll have my walk around lens, which is the 24 to 70 or a 16 to 35. Now seeing that in comparison, what I've been using lately are these Fuji cameras. I picked up the five last year and this year I picked up the six. So this is the Fujifilm X106 and X105. I will be bringing the X106 with me. Just comparing for weight alone, this is so much lighter and it's so much more inconspicuous opposed to taking this big huge camera out, which for me, having to take out a big huge camera makes me less likely to use this. I use this all the time now because I can just pop it out of my pocket or in my bag, take a few shots and put it back away. Also, because it has the Fuji recipes on it, I haven't really been editing at all. Maybe I'll add a crop. I'll just go ahead, take the photo, see what I like, crop it a little bit and post it up. So there's that too for that process. The camera that I used to bring with me a lot and I'll bring this out for like dedicated trips, so I'm not bringing it with me now, it would be like my Fujifilm GS645S. I love this film camera, it's my medium format camera that I go to, but it's one of those things like, do I really need it? No, it's nice to have. Now with the other Fujifilm cameras with the film simulations, it's getting kind of close. So it's one of those things like, bring it for nostalgia reasons, or I don't, I am doing a video coming up comparing this camera with this film to the Fujifilm X106 with the film simulation with the same film stock. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. And that should be coming up as soon as I get my film back. Now, the other thing is gonna be with my bigger cameras, my mirrorless and everything, I have filters that go with it. They're decent size. And of course, you know, I have a polarizer and drill density. Then maybe I'll do like some black mist or something like that. And right now, the only filter I've been using is this one right here that I have on it. This is the Polar Pro filter, and I do have a small video if you're interested in it. It basically lives on my Fujifilm X106 right now. Uh, I love it. It has a polarizer, it has a slight black mist kind of feature to it. I really enjoy using it, so it doesn't leave the camera and it's always there. And again, that's one less thing that I have to worry about is switching all those out. Now in terms of batteries and memory cards, uh, I have one case right now. If I will go anything smaller, I'll use like the individual ones, which I'll probably do for this trip, bring like maybe one extra card for my Fuji and one for my Osmos Pocket 3. But like in terms of batteries, pretty close sizing, chargers about the same size, so there's no real huge gain or loss there. Another thing that I will be bringing that I've moved out of my kit for events like this is my DJI Mini Pro 3. Now for a vacation like this, where it is short, I'm not gonna be bringing a drone with me. Be nice to have at the same time, I'm probably not gonna be able to use it just due to time restraints and not really going out dedicated for shooting, walk around the city, mostly probably no fly zones up there in and around Boston. And then also like, I'd have to carry the case for it. And that's just takes up a whole nother thing where if I have more useful things or if I just want a lighter pack, it makes more sense not to bring it with me. Another small thing that sometimes makes my kit, but I'm not bringing this time, is an action cam. I love these because you can fit them in tiny little spaces. You don't have to worry about them too much, uh, especially if you go for some older models. Like this is a five. You can find these for under a hundred bucks and they still work really well. I really enjoy using these little GoPro cameras. I do some off-roading, camping, and overlanding. These are perfect for that. You can throw it outside your vehicle, not to worry about it. For this trip and for other trips, I usually don't bring it unless I have a specific purpose for it. Like again, you know, if I'm off-roading, I know that this can take a beating. Now for video, I can take some video on my Fujifilm X106 and I've actually been using it more and been pretty impressed by it. I'm gonna be bringing my Canon R6, which I do a lot of my videos on. But lately, I've been switching over to the DJI Osmos Pocket 3. This has been pretty much my go-to and for a lot of my shooting here in my house or just around vlogging, doing this or that, or just trying to get some B-roll, this is my go-to camera because it is so small, it's really easy to use. And again, you know, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Now with that, of course, you gotta pair it with some good filters. I like to shoot at 24 frames, so this allows me to do that. 
I recently picked these up. These are KNF Concepts, and this actually allows you to have the camera go back into the original orientation when in this case, or the other case I like to use is this little plastic one that just pops over it. Um, you can use this filter, keep it on there, have it turn off and go back to the original position so you can use this. So that's why I've been using these and so far I've been impressed. Of course with the Pocket 3, I did get the Creator Combo. Highly recommend that. A few little useful accessories in there. You get the battery grip if you need to charge it or just a little extra grip. Get the little tripod in there. Something that I've added to it is actually this little silicone base. That's all you have to do. It is really small and works great as like a tripod. Highly recommend these. These are super cheap. Go ahead and get yourself one. Below, I'll have a bunch of links for a lot of this gear. Some of them are affiliate links. Some are just straight to the company. For the affiliate links, there's no additional cost for you, but they do help out the channel. So I do appreciate if you use those. If you have any questions about any of this gear or just anything in general, let me know down in the comment section below. I really enjoy seeing those comments pop up and engaging with all y'all. It lets me know that I'm moving in the right direction or maybe I need to pivot and just turn a little bit. So if you have any thoughts, let me know. Now getting back to like the creator combo kit in terms of audio. For me in the past, I try to do like a minimalist setup. What I would do is just this basic little compact road mic and then also the DJI Gen 1's microphones. Now these worked really well. I had them basically since they came out. I'm using it right now and I highly recommend them even if you're looking at it because they are cheaper than the DJI Mic 2. So while I do use the DJI Mic 2, you can find these at really great prices for people upgrading. And then DJI is dropping them to promote the DJI Mic 2s. So if you're interested in kind of picking up a budget one that works really well, check these out. But saying that, the DJI Mic 2 that comes with the Creator Combo, I did have a few issues and before they did a firmware update, but since they've done that, I haven't had any issues with it. This pairs pretty much perfectly with the DJI Pocket 3. And it also works really well with my phone. It's versatile, small, and I'm really comfortable with it because I've used the older generation. Now, just a few other things that I'll throw in here that I'm bringing with me would be, of course, you want a cleaning kit, something to clean your camera, camera lens. If you're a photographer or do any video, you know that you should have that. Also, lens wipes. I have little moist wipes that I bring with me because I wear eyeglasses or sunglasses, or again, these lenses or whatever, they're there if you need them. Now, in terms of trying to carry this stuff, as I mentioned, like, I have a bag for the drone. Everything fits really nicely in it. This is the one from DJI if you get the combo. It takes up space. The same thing for like this bag here, which is the Low Pro Creator Box XXL, something like that. I really enjoy using this. It's worked out really well. I found this for steel. I think I got it for like 40 bucks and it provides a really good amount of protection. I can fit my R6 with my 24 to 70 plus one additional lens. And then of course, filters and cleaning materials, whatever else I need to throw in there. That does take up a lot of room in terms of using something like this, comparing to that, this has a much smaller footprint. The case I've been using lately is this one, is by Wutoncraft, not Wontoncraft, like I said in previous video when I did a review of this. I really like this case because it is a really small footprint. But also if you have it in here and you're carrying it around, I use a lot of Peak Design anchors and I have the, the ones I use for this on another camera right now. I put them on here and I can use a camera strap to use this as like a sling bag. But say I wanna carry the camera, I can always take that on there and I have Peak Design's anchors on that camera, hook it up to that, crush down to, and this will fit in my back pocket or cargo pocket. Now the last thing I'm gonna be bringing are hopefully these, I will be switching these out for another frame so hopefully they get here in time. These glasses are the Ray-Ban Metas and they actually just came out with an update. So now with these you can take up to three minutes of video and that's up from 60 seconds. I think that these have great potential for like behind the scenes or even now more like candid moments with the family taking a picture or video here that I can use for specifically my family and capturing some of those moments that it's kind of awkward when you take out a camera because, you know, everyone sees that and it's like, oh, we got to pose up. Or even like just meeting up with friends, trying to capture more of that candid moments. All of this will fit into a bigger bag and flying on a plane is you got to really think, especially now when they're getting more and more strict on what you can carry. I really like Mystery Ranch bags, so all three of these bags are going to be Mystery Ranch. Now, what I usually carry, especially if I'm traveling by my truck, is I'll carry this, which is the Mystery Ranch No Scape Dragon. I can fit whole lot in here. I fit the creator combo with my drone with one or two of those Evergood pouches 
This holds pretty much all my camera gear minus like maybe my gimbal. I can stick a tripod on the side or a bottle of water there. Then I keep this little trauma pouch here on the side. And then if I need even more room, it has a little beaver tail that will flap out so I can stuff more gear in here. It is on the bigger side as I can fit all that stuff and it does weigh a little bit more. So for this trip, I'm gonna be downsizing to one of these two beds. These are both made by Rissier Ranch too. This is the Unicorn 2.0, and this is the Mystery Ranch Spartan. This being the smaller one, and this one being a little bit more. I'll put the liter size down below in the caption. All three of these bags were a special release by Mystery Ranch and Carryology. You can only find them on the secondhand market, but you can find them, especially these two. I see these two come up fairly often. Now, for this trip, I don't know which one I'm going to use. I have flown with this one, and I actually have flown with this one as my personal carry-on but I know they are getting a little bit more strict, so I'm trying to figure out which one's gonna be my personal carry-on. Now with this gear that I'm carrying, I'm carrying a lot less, so I have more room in the bag. I'm leaning probably on the lighter one, but then it is nice to have a little pocket space to stuff a few more extras. Maybe you wanna carry a sweater with you or something like that. So there you go. That's kind of my downsizing to just not bare essential gear, but definitely a lot less and smaller gear, and this will allow me to be more in the moment Especially again, being that I'm spending a lot of time with family and friends and I just really want to enjoy my time there, but still be able to capture those moments. So one little bonus thing, something that I bring sometimes, I'm not really sure if I'm going to bring it yet, but who knows, uh, it's going to be an Instamatic camera. I love using these. A lot of times I'll take photos and then give it to my friends or family. To me, it's like almost when you would go to the movies or to some special event and they'd have a photo booth there. You, you take a few funny photos, you have those on a strip. It's something that later on when you look back, it just takes you right back to that moment. So if you are traveling and you're looking for just maybe something that's not as common, pick up an Instamatic camera. And I'll go ahead and wrap this up here. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.